ironed out. I know there's been a lot going on with the development side with Liquid Loans and the Oracle service that we're bringing uh, to Pulse Chain. Can you give us some updates on that side? Yeah, look, we're pretty excited about this because we've been working with uh, Nick Fett and the Tellor team just to work on the Oracle service itself. Um, we're very well advanced in terms of the Oracle service is up and running. Uh, we're just doing some testing at the moment to make sure that we can do price feeds from the Oracle service. Um, there will be a lot more that we'll say about that, I think, we're sort of coming up with different names for the Oracle service itself. Uh, it won't be Tello for a variety of reasons, but it is the Tello system. And um, Nick is helping us through that process and their team's working with our team just to make sure that everything's rock solid when we uh, when we finally release the testnet version of that. Um, something to bear in mind for the community, though, is that there will be an Oracle service that obviously we'll take advantage of because we need to draw prices from the service. Uh, but um, no doubt there's going to be a whole bunch of other DeFi projects that would appreciate being able to pull the price of Pulse from the service itself. Um, so we'd urge those teams, if they want to have a chat to us, that um, please reach out and we'll, uh, we'll engage with you on anything that you might be interested in, in that space. As I said, the name, we're still it's still up in the air. We've got some really good names, but we're... Um, we're hoping to sort of just maybe get some feedback, even to in, in this interview, um, that, you know, some people that watch this might have some suggestions for the name. Um, we'll, we'll happily take those on board and, uh, and come back to the community with the name for the new service. But fundamentally, it is the, uh, the Tello system that's sitting behind this. Um, the one exciting thing, though, is that we're not bridging in any tokens. So we initially thought, oh, we could just bridge in the Tello tokens and work it that way. But it just creates another attack vector. And we just thought, you know what, it's probably not worthwhile. Let's look at managing this on the chain. So the incentive token for anyone that provides a price feed um, will be a native token on Pulse Chain. Um, so fundamentally, we'll have a, a, a different token. Again, we, don't, we haven't come up with a name for that, but the token will be made available. And fundamentally, how it works is how, how all Oracle services generally work is that people stake a certain amount of their incentive token and they pr provide a price fee. Now, if there's a nefarious actor, that usually gets disputed. So someone who will dispute the price and say, hang on, that's that's not the right price. And then there'll be a dispute and then there's a resolution of the dispute. And usually if the nefarious actor comes in, um, uh, effectively anything that they've staked gets slashed. So it's an expensive process for anyone that uh, wants to do the wrong thing. But as you can imagine, there's a whole bunch of um, mechanics that we need to go through with the Tellor team to make sure that that's working properly. Um, but fundamentally, we're really excited about this. Um, that's not to say that we won't be using PulseX. So PulseX is definitely going to be our fallback position. So one of the things that within the code that is written is that in the event that's just say something happens with the Tellor, Tellor Oracle system and it breaks and there's a problem, uh, there's always a default, and the default in our case will be PulseX. So we'll still be pulling prices from PulseX um, in the event that there is any issues. And that's generally, I think that's a very solid way of doing it in the event that there's an issue with the uh, the Oracle service. There's always a backup, and that's the approach that we're taking. But having said that, we're really excited about what we're developing with the, the team over at Tellor. Um, we will make more announcements about this. I, I think Fundamentally, what we'd like to see is there was a whole bunch of folk that were looking at providing validators for um, Pulse Chain. And now that the delegated proof of stake, that sort of mechanism's no longer going to be used, some of the people that may have invested in, in infrastructure to actually support Pulse Chain in that way may still do that, but it's not the same as what it was with the delegated proof of stake. Um, but being a reporter, for an Oracle service on Pulse Chain can also be quite lucrative. So um, there, there may be ways for people to generate feeds from providing um, accurate price feeds to the Oracle service itself. So we'll make more announcements about that in due course, um, but we're really excited about the progression of that for us. Definitely exciting to hear how far things are coming with the protocol, but also, like you said, with the Oracle service, people can become a reporter, they can, you know, earn yield, and it's a true De DeFi protocol, so staying true to our word. And like you said, we have that contingency plan to fall back on in the event that the Oracle did go down. So uh, very exciting. And also, like you said, if anyone has any good names, maybe they could drop it below in the comments and uh, let us know your thoughts on it. Yeah. 
That'd be awesome, actually. Be really good. And, we, and as I said, we've got we've got some interesting names. I, I, I'm sworn to secrecy at the moment, but um, we'd certainly like to hear from the community. And I, look, we're obviously discussing this with Nick and the team as well, um, just to make sure that we're all comfortable with the team, the name that we come up with. And, and as I said, I think we're pretty excited with where we've gotten to with Liquid Lines. Um, I, the only other thing I did mean to say, um, Matt, was that we know version three is coming out, so we're sort of patiently waiting. There's a few things that we want to get out to the community as part of the test net, but we kind of figure, look, it's better to hold off until V3 is out because we're going to have to release contracts again. And there will be a process when that happens. So, for example, people that have used uh, their test pulse and locked it up in a vault within the liquid line system um, will sort of explain what you need to do. You need to basically um, close your vault and then re re reclaim your pulse and then you can move to the new version. So the two versions will coexist, um, but if you want to play around on the new version when it's released, um, then then you will need to go through that process. Um, but at this point in time, there's no there's no value in us releasing anything until V3 is out, um, and we're hoping that that's going to be very soon. Awesome. 